Hello and welcome to a little different video here on the In Pencil page. Today we are going to talk about a trailer that just came out two days ago. So if you know anything about me, I love Blossom Tales. I played it twice, I've completed it. It is a love letter to the Zelda series, especially 2D Legend of Zelda games. And I thought it was really good. And two days ago on Indie Land, which is a charity stream done by uh, The Completionist, along with the, that one video gamer or, uh, crew, and uh, they talked, the developers of Blossom Tales were on there and they were talking about the game, and then they revealed a trailer to the sequel. And that's what we're gonna watch today, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, we can see it's Platonic Friends, which is the publishing side of Platonic, who does ukulele. Uh, really cool game series. So this is really nice to see. I don't know anything about them as publishers or developers. I just know some of their games. And Castle Pixel is, uh, let me see if I can scrub back. Uh, just to, yeah, okay. I'm learning how to do this all at one time. But Castle Pixel is the, they're the developers of Blossom Tales and a few other games as well. And we can see here in the original game, uh, there's this over there's this narrative story, um, frame story I think is what it's called, where you have a grandfather talking to his grandkids and telling them a story before bedtime, and that's how we have the original Blossom Tales. And it looks like we're getting something like that again, except this time it is done at Capside. So they're out, I guess, camping or just outside in the trees. And that's really cool and I love this look and everything and I'm actually going to turn the volume off this I had the volume on you heard it a little bit in the background I'd recommend going and listening to it because it's it's really good I just don't want a bunch of feedback as I'm listening to it I should have turned the volume off but I didn't my bad but uh, listen to the music. The music is great in the first one. The music's great on this trailer. I'll leave a link below. So a little bit thing to know is like I've been waiting for a sequel for so long. I've been watching every Nintendo Indie World hoping that a sequel comes out and it never did. And then of course Indie Land. Indie World? No, but Indie Land? Yes. Which is cool. It's just funny how that happened but I'm so glad it's here. So let's let's watch a little bit more. I hear another story and yes Blossom tells us about the Kingdom of Blossom and, uh, the two grandkids here and they want to hear another one and hopefully they all hear a lot more after this one as well so now we get into the story and you see first of all this looks like a very medieval type of setting and what makes what it was really cool about it is it kind of reminds me of a knight's tale for some reason i don't know why but i love the pixels and i don't actually know this location i don't know if it's updated or if it's different from the first one and this of course being a frame story the whole world can look completely different and it's okay because it's just grandfather telling the story uh, and i really like that but you can see uh, here we have what looks to be you fighting a king. This kind of reminds me of the king from the first game. That's interesting. And we're in tombs. Uh, but And you look up here and you can see the sword and what looks to be a lantern. Four hearts. So this is a little bit past the first one, which I think had three hearts. If I go back. Now you can see she has three hearts there. And now she has four hearts. And it looks like she's trying to light these. Here, look at this. Um, I'm just going to keep saying here a lot. We have an owl. Very reminiscent of, if you remember, Ocarina of Time. But also, even before that, you had an owl in Link's Awakening. But here looks very similar to the N64 Ocarina of Time. It's notes. Lily looks like she's playing... Uh, playing the... Uh, some instrument. I'm not sure which one, but that's cool bringing in the instrumentation and look at these clouds. It's just beautiful. I love pixel art and I love this very, uh, very cool look of this type of pixel art. 
here we have what looks to be, uh, I'm going to say this is a mini boss in maybe the first dungeon. And you've got her sword, shield, and bombs. And she's trying to take out this pirate. And this looks kind of like a mini boss setting. The dungeons were, in the first game, weren't, were fun, but they got a little repetitive. And that is my hope is that they're able to add new puzzles and new elements to the dungeons to make them a lot more fun. I think the overworld was really great in the first one and the dungeons were lacking at times, but hopefully they're able to do a lot more this time. Yeah, uh, here we have what looks a lot like the castle from the original, but it's different. You have different enemies and it's almost like the light world versus the dark world because it looks like a pig here and that kind of reminds me of link to the past where you go in the dark world and everyone's a different animal and this is very early on in the game by the looks of it i i'm just going by the hearts i'm not 100 percent sure if that's correct but uh this looks early on in some kind of like halloween type setting so i wonder if this is coming out in halloween time and here you see i can't tell is that a this is either a pickaxe or we'll look at later on and see if it might be something else. But this is interesting. This could be the musical instrument. This looks like a walkie talkie. This could be some kind of, I don't know. It looks like it's got button, button, uh, screen and antenna, but I'm not really sure. This is going to be interesting to see what this uh, is up here. Here, uh, this is much later on by the looks of it, a lot more hearts. And it looks like zombies again, except these are a little different looking zombies. It's like a master zombie uh, and some electricity like in the first game. Uh, that's really cool. And zombies up against the wall. This is a very interesting game, <laughs> it looks like. This is really cool. Minecarts. That is a throwback to me. It reminds me of like the Oracle series or even um, Minish Cap, which Minish Cap had the really cool minecarts uh, where Link was just like flown across uh, the minecarts. And I really think this is, this is really cool looking and it's a really new, it's a new element. It looks like early on, this could be like the tunnels underneath the castle or something, I don't know. I'm doing some predict predictions. I'm not really a theorist, but here I am theorizing. We have Morkla. I don't know if that's how you pronounce this one's name, but it's like a turtle. And you can see you get to go inside it, which is cool. This right here reminds me of Turtle Rock. And look at these uh, things. And I, I don't know what to say there, but it looks like you play a musical, maybe that musical instrument to go in here. This also kind of reminds me of, uh, uh, I forgot what the temple was called. It's up in the top left corner in the first game where it's cold and ice kind of has that setting similarities and the owl is back except this is in the desert uh this again you see someone's trapped here and you have a bow uh four hearts so hard to tell if these are they just haven't done all the hearts haven't gotten all the hearts so whoever um, captured this footage but here's another musical door so i wonder if this is going to be a lot more musical themed uh, here is a ghostly village again kind of reminds me of that first one you see a pirate down here at the bottom and some ghost uh, and that looks like a witch almost uh, but I'm just wondering if uh, if there's that theme of Halloween type theme that I keep seeing that's gonna be a something that plays especially since it's a it's it looks like the frame story is a camps a campfire which is where you still tell spooky stories like are you afraid of the dark and i wonder if that is going to influence this this reminds me of um a link to the no excuse me link's awakening there's later on in the late game there's that dungeon where you fight the vulture or the bird at the top of the dungeon and this has that feel to it like this is a boss and you're about to fight this vulture at the top of a dungeon, and that's really cool. I like the Zelda references uh, in the first game, and I hope they continue and outside of just A Link to the Past, but also into like Link's Awakening or the Oracle series and other things, and maybe even some other games besides Zelda. 
might even get it influenced here. I'll talk about one of those here in a moment. Here we have what looks to be the main gap bad guy, the Minotaur King. That's interesting. This is called the Minotaur King. We'll get back to that. This guy is. And you see he shows up at this beginning scene where they're playing and having fun and jousting and all that. Well, I guess they weren't jousting. I didn't see any horses, but this is going to be interesting to see who this Minotaur King is. This right here, you see these one tile blocks. I did not like those in the first game. I played on the Switch. You can also get this on Steam, uh, the original game. And I didn't really like the one tile puzzles or the one tile areas. I thought it was really hard uh, and frustrating at times, uh, a lot of times. I hope it's better and a little bit easier this time. These tiles might be a little bigger than the last ones. I don't know. Maybe they're the same. But it looks like uh, she has a slingshot. And look at this up here. I bet you can crack. I bet you can put a bomb there. And these items here again. And it looks like, as you can see, that's a slingshot, which looks a lot similar to this. So this must be a slingshot. Still don't have a clue what this is. Um, maybe we'll see. And that looks like a worm monster. This one uh, looks like the final boss from the scene that we saw earlier where we saw a, uh, let me move this out of the way, where we saw the uh, pirate where I said looks like the mini boss or the midway boss. This looks like the final boss of that level. And it reminds me of a boss in Star Tropics, which is another Zelda-like game, so to say. And uh, I really love Star Tropics, as talked about on this channel before. And this kind of reminds me of that boss where you face off against an octopus, except you can go around this one instead of just being in front of it in Star Tropics. Uh, but I think these are both in the same dungeon, the earlier where you're bombing the uh, pirate and this one where you're, I guess, running around. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is interesting. In the first game, there was no mention of a brother, I don't believe inside this story and so this is some lore the minotaur king took her brother and it's all her fault i don't know this location a lot of these locations look different than in the first game and yeah here's the frame story again and what is the name of the story it is called blossom tells to the let me go a little bit further blossom tells to the minotaur Prince. Remember, the Minotaur King looked like the big bad guy who took the brother. The brother, I'm wondering if the brother is actually the Minotaur Prince. And so the Minotaur King took the brother to be his like heir or something, and he's going to be the Minotaur Prince. I'm not sure. There's my theories. I've given a bunch of theories, but here it is Blossom Tells 2 The Minotaur Prince. I like this, it's on Steam and the Switch. Uh, what I got it, I got it on the Switch the first time. And you can go play the first one. It's on the Switch and it's on Steam. And you can wish list it on Steam. I've already done that. I, if you really like this type of game, I would go, go play the first one. It's not that expensive. Go, go support indie developers too. It's, they're really bringing in some really cool types of games and I think that's really great and I will link this trailer in the description so you can watch it and listen to it as well since I took out the sound on this one and you can wish list it and we will probably talk more about Blossom Tales later on I, I hope to do that uh, I doubt I'll do a playthrough I'm not I haven't done a solo playthrough uh, of uh, and put it on stream before, um, but who knows? Maybe I will. I have beaten this game twice, the original game, not the Blossom Tales 2, and I loved it both times. As I said, there were some difficult parts that were, uh, I don't know if they were unfair or if it's just my skill level wasn't up to par, uh, um, or my controller was not the best setting that I, I could have done that. Um, I was using, uh, I think, an analog stick, and uh, you can also use like 
uh, a D-pad is probably a lot better, a lot easier, and maybe it works a lot better on a computer. I had to play it on the Switch. And I thought that some of the f um, first game had some issues with repetitiveness, but overall, the first game was so fun and so good. It had like secrets everywhere on the overworld. The dungeons were really great. Uh, it was just overall a great and fun time and fun experience. And I recommend play the game. And next year, hopefully, we can all play Blossom Tales 2, the Minotaur Prince. And we'll figure out who the Minotaur Prince is. I hope you enjoyed this type of video. Well, if not, we'll be back to the other types here soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.